hello and good morning today our topic is anatomy of the head and neck we will also be doing clinical conditions okay let's start um, common exam questions um, neck triangles lymph node distribution blood supply neurology okay how to examine the thyroid and parotid facial n nerve sinuses and headache distribution okay we will first study the skeletal anatomy this is the temporal bone which is the fossa this is the external acoustic mutus where ear is present this is the mastoid process stylo mandibular ligament this is the mandibular notch this is the zygomatic arch sphenoid bone okay ramus of the mandible this is the mandible itself this is the hyoid bone this is the epiglottis thyroid cartilage trachea first rib angle of mandible stylohyoid okay okay skull this is the frontal bone on the front zygomatic bone on the cheeks nasal bone on the nose maxilla above the teeth mandible this is all the mandible this is all mandible okay okay skull frontal bone okay parietal bone temporal bone near the ears an occipital bone behind it is called occipital because our eye or see our we see our brain perceives our eyes from here okay the the area where from which we see okay and uh, these are the muscles strap muscles this is the geniohyoid this is the digastric muscle present here this is the mylohyoid this is the styloid and the digastric okay and this is the sternocleidomastoid this is the clavicular head this is the sternal head neck triangles there's the anterior posterior triangles okay the in the anterior triangles this is the inferior border of mandible okay behind this is the cavicle and this is the sternocleidomastoid making the boundary in the posterior there is cavical present and the trapezius muscle and the sternocleidomastoid muscle okay what's in the anterior triangle any idea okay let me give you idea there are three strap muscles sorry strap muscles and three further triangles in the anterior triangle common carotid artery bifurcates within the triangle into the external and internal carotid arteries and the in the internal jugular vein can be found in this area it drains blood from the head and neck okay and there is the facial nerve glossopharyngeal and vagus accessory and hypoglossal lymph nodes facial artery and vein and thyroid and parathyroids okay these are also present as you can see this is the external carotid artery and its branches first there is a common carotid artery then it's divided into internal carotid and external carotid the external carotid further divides into superior thyroid ascending pharyngeal and then into lingual and then into occipital and then the posterior auricular and in the facial and then above it goes into the maxillary and then the superficial temporal in meaning in the ears okay you can remember this by this mnemonic or this or this okay s a l s a l f o f o p m s p m s okay facial love as you can see you can remember it by to Zanzibar by motor car cervical mandibular near the mandible buccal near the cheeks zygomata above it this part okay and this is the temporal near the ears what is in the posterior triangle let's figure it out omohyoid muscle and the inferior belly crosses the posterior triangle okay and the scalene muscles and the subclavian artery 
between the anterior and middle scalenes external jugular vein which empties into the subclavian vein these are all present in the posterior triangle nerves which are present in the posterior triangle this is extra accessory nerve which is the 11th nerve after innervating the sternocleidomastoid muscle it enters the posterior triangle okay it lies relatively superficial to the posterior triangle and is at the danger of injury if you want to check the accessory nerve ask the patient to shrug his shoulders if he cannot shrug his shoulders uh, against resistance it means there is a damage in to the accessory nerve okay he cannot calm as well and the cervical plexus from within the muscles of the floor of the posterior triangle a major part branch of this plexus is the phrenic nerve which arises from the anterior divisions of the spinal nerve c3 and 5 and it descends down the neck within the prevertebral fascia to innervate the diaphragm phrenic nerve also innervates the diaphragm we always remember that okay the trunks of brachial plexus can also cross the floor of the posterior triangle neck layers this is the neck okay there is the investing layer the most superficial of the deep cervical facial layers there are more layers as well surrounds all the structures in the neck okay and when it means that this trapezius in the sternocleidomastoid it splits into two to invest the muscle okay then there is the investing layer this is the sternocleidomastoid this is the trapezius behind this is front view this is the behind view posterior view and this is the investing layer surrounding all the neck covering all the muscles especially the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius okay as you can see then there is the pretracheal layer it envelops the trachea esophagus and the thyroid gland and the infrahyoid muscles running from the hyoid bone down to the superior thorax where it fuses with the pericardium and it is it can be functionally split into two parts which is the visceral part enclosing the visceras mean namely the thyroid gland trachea and esophagus and the muscular part which encloses the infrahyoid muscle okay then there is the pretracheal layer as you can see this is the trachea and th this is the pretracheal layer covering it and this is the thyroid gland both on both sides okay and this is the osophagus and these are the infrahyoid muscles it is also covering the infrahyoid muscles and these are the neck layers prevertebral layers the th third one is prevertebral layers surrounds the vertebral column and is associated muscles which is scalene prevertebral and deep muscles of the back in the inferior region of the neck the fascia surrounds the brachial plexus subclavian artery and uh, here it is known as the axillary sheet okay this is surrounding the vertebral column and the carotid sheath and the internal jugular vein and the common carotid artery and the vertebrae are, are present in this as well and this is the prevertebral sheath what's in the carotid sheath the neck compartments in the, the carotid sheaths in the carotid sheaths there are the common carotid artery which bifurcates into the internal and external then the internal jugular vein and then there's the vagus nerve and there are also cervical lymph nodes and column that descends from the base of the skull to the thorax and this represents a pathway for the spread of infection it will clinically very important so what in which layer which pathway spreads infection and is clearly very important and which is present in carotid sheath okay the column infection spread of infections here helps in the spread of infections 
A superficial skin abscess is prevented from spreading further into the neck by investing layer of fascia. Okay. Investing layer keeps the infection inside it. It spreads when the erosion of the prevertebral fascia occurs and drainage into the retropharyngeal space. Okay. Between the investing fascia and pretracheal fascia, this can spread inferiorly to the chest, causing infection anterior to the pericardium. Okay, these are the sinuses. Okay, this is the frontal. Okay, air extensions, air filled extensions of the respiratory tract of the nasal cavity. Four pair sinuses named according to the bone located in the maxillary, frontal, sphenoid, and ethmoid, which contributes to the humidifi humidifying of the inspired air and reduce the weight of the skull. Okay. Frontal, sphenoid, ethmoid, maxillary. Okay. Frontal sinus drains the frontal nasal duct drains into the nasal cavity via the frontal nasal duct. This is the frontal sinus. Okay. And spinite sinus drain out onto the roof of the nasal cavity. Clinical importance, the pituitary gland can be surgically assessed via the passing through the nasal roof and into the spinite sinus to the spinite bone. Okay. This is the spinite sinus. Then there's ethmoidal the sinus, empties into the nasal cavity at different places. Then there's the maxillary, the largest located laterally and to the inferiorly to the nasal cavities. Okay. The maxillary sinus. This is the sphenoid. Sorry, ethmoid. This is the ethmoid. Okay, clinical relevance, sinusitis. It is the paranasal sinuses. As the paranasal sinuses are continuous with the nasal cavity, an upper respiratory tract infection can spread into the sinuses. It causes inflammation. In tooth ache, the maxillary nerve supplies both the maxillary sinus and the maxillary teeth. So the inflammation of the sinus can present with. Okay, these are the sinus view. Frontal. Ethmoidal, maxillary, okay, and there are the grants, submandibular, meaning be below the mandible, and sublingual, meaning below the tongue, and then there is a lingual, okay. And then there is the parotid. The duct of parotid opens into the second last molar tooth. Then there is the lymph nodes. We will do them in the next video. Thank you very much for listening. We will do them in the part 2.